What's going on, you loyal listeners? Thank you for tuning in to the L Squared Podcast. I am joined here by arguably the most special guest I've ever had. I know, I know you're very familiar with the show, so you know just how special we get. Sitting here is the direct co-director of Rodents of Unusual Size, Quinn Costello. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah. I keep wanting to say Rodents of Unusual Sizes. Do you run into that? Uh, I guess it's been just fixed as Rodents of Unusual um, Size because of that. Um, I don't know, we've been calling it for that mm-hmm. long. When we first started making it, we um, we hear you know naturalists and biologists and stuff who were working on nutrient problems in Louisiana were calling the animals Rodents of Unusual size mm. after the princess bride and so that's where oh, uh, okay. that's, it, it stuck from a pretty early um uh early period and it just kind of froze cool. in, in our consciousness yeah 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 like when i saw the <clears throat> i don't know if you want to call it a marquee but you know south dakota film festival you know premiering or not premiering but their big event was this film for last night and it was a documentary and i my initial reaction was like okay, great, it's going to be a documentary about a bunch of different types of rodents. Like, I was like, all right, cool. You know, I didn't look anything into it, but um, I got to say this, I'm not blowing smoke here, but it's honestly one of my favorite documentaries that I've ever Thanks, seen. Thanks, man. Um, it's, I, I didn't really know what to expect, but from literally right away, I was hooked. Um, you know, it was like, I'm nervous to be sitting here talking to you because of you don't have to be nervous. I, I, I I think I thank you for saying that. Mm -hmm. I, I, um, it, I'm touched to hear it because, uh, you know, it's my first film. Um, and it's something that, um, it it meant a lot to uh, the three of us as we made it. And it's, um, it's something where it, like when you work on a documentary for a long time, you ask yourself so many times, like, why, what am I doing? Why mm. the hell am I down sure. here? I've been in the swamps yeah. now for three years. Oh we're broke. God. We've lot, you know, uh, I don't know what, how we're going to get to the finish line with this thing. When is it done? And then, uh, you know, but you keep kind of just trusting the process, right? Mm. You just trust like, okay, yeah. one foot in front of the other. And then, um, we, kind of arrived at where we arrived at just by you know always asking film friends of ours and Mm. fans and different people for help weighing in on like how is this working is this like uh does this turn in the plot kind of make sense and Mm. all these different things and um you don't really know what the audience is going to think until Mm. you know is projected and so right it's really great to get the chance like in places like the South Dakota film festival where, Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're, they, I think that people are, they, they understand like the tone of it or whatever. It really fits with the personality of the festival and that kind of fun freewheeling Mm -hmm. kind of, uh, approach to films, which we really like. And part of what I've loved about the process of being out there on the road for the last, um, six or seven months or so has been seeing that there are like, so many film fans out there who mm. still care about seeing movies in the theater. You yeah, know? for sure. So, um, thank you for saying that. Yeah. I appreciate it. You know, yeah, and I, I'm i from South Dakota, <clears throat> and growing up in, you know, I grew up in a town of about 200, and, um, you know, the the culture of trapping and, and getting out there hunting is, is very much alive. And so I, I connect with that part, but just growing up a movie fan and, and being always being a big fan of movies, I just thought I was born in the wrong state. <laughs> you know, it's like you just look around and like I would have a couple friends like, um, you know, I had a friend in high school and then uh, the co-host, you know, we're all from the same town, but three people out of, you know, it's it's not that many. So to when I found out about the festival and reached out to him, you know, being here, it's been this festival has been great and it's just cool to see South Dakota having like a really cool festival like this where, and you look around and you see other South Dakotans that can come and appreciate film. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's cool. It makes me proud to be, but let's talk about, so let's give the people a little synopsis of what the film is, this documentary is about. Sure. Uh, 
Yeah, so rodents of unusual size is about these big 20 pound invasive rodents that were brought to Louisiana from Argentina for their fur. And the idea was we're going to bring them here to the United States and um, they are going to be this wonderful miracle because they're going to be like this cheap alternative to mink and muskrat. And one of the fellows that brought the animals over was the guy, uh, <laughs> the grandson of the guy on the um, Tabasco bottle, uh, bottle, you know, the oh, Macalini yeah, 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 yeah. family, oh, who was kind true. of an eccentric person. Well, and clearly, just based some, on just, that one fact. And it, I think it's like a very, um, this very American impulse, right? Where yeah. it's hubris, mm. naivete, yeah. capitalism, all kind of coming together to yeah. be like, you know what? Who cares if they're not from here? These rats are gonna like make us a lot of money. Yeah. So they brought they brought them over, and then uh, they were raising them on these like fur farms. Mm-hmm. And the fur it wasn't quite working out, and the and so they decided, you know what, we're gonna do um, a big favor to everybody in Louisiana. We're gonna release them into the swamps, and they'll be like the people's rat. Yeah. you know. And, and what's they, the like, worst that could happen? And what's the worst that could happen? And it turns out that the worst <laughs> that could happen is that they started to multiply and multiply and multiply. There's really no effective predator. Mm. There's nothing to regulate them. The cycle wow. of the seasons kind of doesn't, uh, it's, it's so um, well suited to them to just kind of thrive. The, they mate and they multiply and breed so mm. voraciously that like they their numbers just like blew up. And they actually did become a pretty big resource for the Cajun people mm. uh, to live off of. Pe- trapping and hunting and all these things um, became a real big part of like the Cajun lifestyle. And so there were all these nutria rat hunters, you know, out there making a living off the fur uh, until the 80s happened. And in the 80s, there was a big animal rights movement mm-hmm. uh, that um, really stigmatized people wearing yep. fur. Right? <clears throat> people always think of the spray paint the red paint on yeah people's it was a and... really effective PR campaign yeah you know and uh, I remember seeing it in the 80s I remember mm. like Bob Barker and you know the, all of the kind of um, people who were making it they're championing it as their cause and I sure. I definitely thought like yeah, yeah of course who doesn't who who wouldn't support this mm-hmm. you know as a cause right but it turned out that through that they did a really good job at um, completely uh demolishing the market for nutria fur and so that's when their numbers went crazy and then they got up to where there was like over 30 million nutria and the problem with them is that they eat all of the coastal wetland plants that hold the state together and the state is already facing tremendous pressure from gas pipelines and hurricanes and all these things and it's literally disappearing into the ocean the state of louisiana is losing a football field of land every hour to wow. coastal erosion. And like as the land disappears, approaching hurricanes, the impact is much, much greater, right? So there's a yeah. direct cause, there's a direct link between nutria <clears throat> and the amount of devastation that wow. a hurricane can wreak on an area. Yeah. So um, anyway, the state, out of desperation, started to implement this pro they were like what the hell are we going to do mm-hmm. so they started to try to get people to eat the nutrient right <laughs> okay. and I, that was just like this yeah. wonderful campaign that fell flat on its <laughs> face because people were not interested in eating yeah. them and so then after trying a bunch of different things they settled on a bounty program which literally pays people five bucks per tail you turn in the tail but five bucks to hunt and trap nutria. and so our film kind of picks up with the people that participate in this bounty program. And it's about the rejuvenation of the Cajun culture. Mm -hmm. It's about capturing the state at at this moment in time, because it really is changing so quickly. And it's such a special part of the United States Mm -hmm. that's disappearing and changing, but it's really about how much joy um, these people have in the face of all of this kind of, destruction it is it's a movie about it just sounds so cheesy but it is about resilience in the face of mm. destruction right. you know and it and then there are a bunch of different tangents that we can yeah. talk about it or not you know yeah i i wasn't aware of how big of a of a deal it was to the culture down there you know uh, 
you think of New Orleans and Louisiana, you think of, you know, the food and Hurricane Katrina, you know, basically the hurricanes. And But one of the, one of the many takeaways I had was I didn't realize how big of a part of the culture Nutria really is down there. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, it was just fascinating. This documentary has won already a lot of awards I saw on your festival run. Best of Festival Award, Best Documentary, Special Jury Award for Films for Our Future, Excellence in American Profiles Award, Jury Award, Best Documentary. I think it won Best Documentary here at this festival. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah we were happy How does that person. feel, man? Well, um, I, I think that the thing that I... Um, it, my background is like in a lot of environmental films, you know? And mm-hmm. I actually was uh, a little unsure of how it would be received in like the environmental filmmaking right, yeah. community because I don't know it's like it's obviously it's a lot of animals that are being killed in the yeah. movie but it's actually had the most success at these like at environmental film festivals because I think people are hungry for stories that are a little bit more upbeat and kind of have take this approach right. that's a little bit more um, buoyant because there mm-hmm. is a lot to despair you know when you're yeah. looking at environmental films um, and uh, but it feel I mean it feels great I like it, it feel, you know um, I, I it, it is it makes me so happy just that people are out there enjoying the film yeah. I'm like um, at this point <laughs> I mean I've talked about Nutria so much and I've yeah. been thinking about it a long time the thing that I you know the thing that I at this point am really enjoying is when I go to these festivals is seeing other people's work sure. and getting kind of inspired and thinking about another project yeah. later down the line, you know, because, mm-hmm. um, these, you know, these festivals are great. And once it ends, once it's on TV, there are no more film festivals. Yeah. And it's like, it's time to do a new <laughs> film. And, right. uh, and that's four or five more years. That yeah. You'll be probably living in the sure. swamp so, somewhere. Oh no, uh, not another one. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, yeah, I, I, it's been, um, yeah. I, yeah, we're very touched to uh, that the that the film has resonated yeah. with as many folks as it has. You know, I mean, it would have been interesting if you said, "Yeah, I don't really give a shit." <laughs> oh no, I mean, I don't care that I've got an award. I, guess, I you know? don't know that anybody doesn't. I mean, I think it's weird when people have like a lot of different expectations for like their films, right? Yeah, and I think that um, you mean like as a filmmaker. Yeah, I think that you di- people have. Um, I think. I think all people who are making art and films, they, they yeah. want to, it to connect to somebody, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it feels really good when it, when it connects, you know? Yeah. And when it like, but at the same time, I mean, I'm an opinionated person who watches films. I, I yeah. dislike a lot of films <laughs> and I totally, and that doesn't mean that like the, that, uh, the process is bad. It's just, there's yeah. a lot of films that don't work, you know, right. for people, you know? And so when people don't, the film doesn't resonate or doesn't mm-hmm. like, that's all kind of part of just putting it out there, you know, and yeah. you just, you hope that more people like it than don't like it. Right. And, um, but, uh, the, f- the fact that like it, it's had the opportunity to get out into all these different festivals mm-hmm. that I really appreciate. Cause at least a lot of people get to see it. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? You hope you can increase it, your odds. Like, yeah. The yeah. People yeah. I see it, just, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, uh, we wanted to make a movie that would, that a lot of different kinds of people could, mm. you know, access, you know what yeah. I mean? And that it, it would be something that would resonate like outside of San Francisco or LA yeah. or whatever. And like, you know, I'm from Idaho and stuff. I wanted oh, to make nice. a movie I could bring back to Idaho and yeah. we could all enjoy it over yeah. there, you know, that is about some of the things mm-hmm. that, you know, were going on when I was growing up around hunting. Yeah. Know, I mean, that's thing. the thing I kept thinking every time was like, you know, this, this person that I know would love it because of this reason, you know, this right. person would love it because like I thought, you know, my grandparents would love this movie for that kooky old guy, you right. know, fisherman who Tom's. dances. Yeah. Tom's. Yeah. I was like, my grand, my grandparents would love that. You yeah. Know, I thought of my friend's dad would love the, um, I forget his name. The guy who, who goes and catches him off golf course. Oh, Michael stuff. Baran. Michael. Yeah. Right. Um, but like you said, going to these festivals and kind of getting inspired to do other things. Do you have anything like, on the docket that you now that that's that you yeah. want to do after this um i it's, i'm working on a film now um uh that like it's a commission piece that uh, for a series called art bound in california which is okay. profiles different california artists and it's about mm-hmm. this legendary um 
ceramicist named Edith Heath and I'm making that with the same guys that we made rodents with and personally like when I'm thinking about another like longer form documentary that will take over my life I don't have um, anything specific at the moment but I would like to do something in the world of stand up comedy you know because oh, uh, I think okay. stand up comedians are fascinating yeah troubled people yeah. you know that uh, there's a lot of stories that kind of emanate from that world and I'm a yeah. big fan you know so I want to um, just kind of yeah. you just, like we we made this movie because we really wanted to kind of immerse ourselves in this in this mm-hmm. strange world of like the Louisiana swamps and Cajun right. country you know yeah. what I mean and that's kind of the approach I think about when I want to work on another film it's like there are a lot of subjects that I care a lot about you know but when you think of, about the way I want to make a film, it's like I want to like live down in it. You know what I mean? Sure. I want to like be in the community. And when you're gonna, when you're looking at that, you're really it needs to be a subject that you really mm. care about. So either stand up comedy or uh, you know I'm a political junkie too. So sure. like a political campaign movie yeah. of some kind. But I don't have any specifics <laughs> at the moment. I'm trying to stay open. Yeah. You know what I mean, there's a lot going on. Who are some of your uh, comedian fan what, who are you fans oh, of right now yeah yeah um there's this person um Kate Berlant who I think is incredibly yeah, like yeah, she yeah. kind of um performs in character she has this really kind of heightened mm. um character that's kind of hard to describe but she's sure. so funny um this guy Andy Daly who does the same mm. thing it's, it's all like character based um and then uh I mean um Greg Proops. Uh, oh, nice. I, I, I yeah. love um, James Adomian. Uh, yes. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of. Um, and uh, God, there's a Kurt Braunohler. I, there's there's mm. a lot of rando yeah. comedians. I go to this comedy festival in Portland every year that, oh, um, nice. that I, I get exposed to so many different underground comics that I always sure. come away just being like, I can't believe this stuff <laughs> is out there. It always explodes my mind. Yeah. Like, what you can do with that form, mm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Did you see The Big Sick this year? Yeah, I love The Big Sick. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, and yeah, um, it was great. I thought, yeah. and I don't like. I generally don't like feature film comedies. You know mm. what I mean? Right. Like, I don't. Yeah. Th- they're usually so milk toast and kind and of broad. They, they're yeah, so yeah, broad, yeah. and yeah. you know, it's just so rare. Unless it's like you're like the Coen Brothers, like it's just rare. <laughs> right. That there's one that I really think is funny, but I thought that one was legit funny. Yeah. yeah. I did too, and it, the I think the reason it was, for me, the reason it was funnier was because it focused on the real relationships, and right. it felt like real people. Yeah. And then the more you care about the real people, then when those real people are funny, yeah, you feel connected to it, yeah. you know. And I I think that makes it yeah funnier. And the jokes were like, they were good jokes that were in there, you know. <laughs> right. It wasn't yeah, don't. <laughs> like I don't when they like they sand down jokes of mm. really funny people like nothing hurts worse than seeing really funny people in really unfunny movies yeah. you know and so and I like that movie because it didn't feel like it sanded down the jokes right. that much you know yeah I mean? yeah yeah for sure yeah it's very sure. subjective though you know I yeah mean, and you know like you said about <clears throat> being appreciative of uh, when you make art and you know when some people don't like it you know obviously everyone says art is subjective and it's right. you know you want to you know, you. I think the ideal situation would be you make something that you really like and that you're really proud of, and like you said, it resonates with with more people than it doesn't, and right. you can connect with people through it. Yeah. yeah. But how do you deal with people who say, "No, not for me. That sucks." Oh, I mean, I totally think it's fine. You know, yeah. I. I mean, I. If the majority of people were saying that, <laughs> that I would maybe think maybe, like, maybe oh, we did something wrong. Uh, you know, um, it's not even like there's so many different kinds of styles of document, and nothing is gonna like resonate with with everybody. You know yeah. what I mean? And yeah. like, I have a lot of friends that are like they just like documentaries that are all verite. You know what I mean? Or like really, really like push the boundary of like what a documentary could be, or is not um, is not like. Uh, it like doesn't have stand up interviews, for instance, mm. and stuff like that. Yeah, and that's fine. Like that's a preference that I totally respect. And some of my favorite films like follow those that particular kind of mm. format. And then I know other people who like a documentary is just like 
all straightforward talking heads mm-hmm. like Ken Burns style stuff. And sure. Like, that's what they like. And anything that's like kind of a little bit more uh, experimental or verite right. just like doesn't work for them. And what's the point, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And uh, I like, I'm inspired by like both worlds, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, like my favorite filmmakers are like um, Les Blank, you know, who made these wonderful films in um, Cajun country, you mm-hmm. know, where he would just immerse himself in the world and kind of just live there and just kind of film what was going on, you know, and you, him and his very talented editor, Morgan Gosling, would kind of figure out the story in the edit room. He made a film with about Werner Herzog making a film, which was legendary, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Burden of Dreams. And, um, and then I like guys like, have you ever heard of Adam Curtis? I have. Um, no. He's an incredible filmmaker, but his movies are just like all interviews and then stock footage, you know, and it's like, but it's like really experimental and he ties hmm. together all these different ideas and he plays around with the yeah. stock footage and it ends up being like these kind of psychedelic, um, you know, spastic kind of adventures and all these huh. different ideas that sprawl out all over the place. And, um, it's so, so he, he forms a narrative based on the stock. It's not any, even really, a, it's more like he is executing on all these different kind of, larger ideas like he, he made this amazing film called um all watched over by machines of loving grace and wow. it is like yeah <laughs> i just the title right yeah. you're like what the fuck and uh the first it's three hours long and the first hour is about it's like tracks the um influence of like ann rand on silicon valley and the growth of okay. silicon valley and this idea that you can kind of m- apply the logic of like the computer world onto humans and map that on there right wow. and then like the second episode was about the same like more of the hippie movement trying to do that with applying the laws of nature onto humans and all these like encounter groups in the 60s and the ways that they were like experimenting and it just it goes so many different places but it's so fun you know yeah that you just can't help but get carried away with it you know right. and um i'm doing a terrible job of like describing it but it sounds like, like you have to is, experience it, it. it. You just have to experience it, yeah. and you and you can't. You have to watch it on YouTube because it's like on the BBC, and uh, this is like the kind of stuff that they fund, you know, uh-huh. on, with their public broadcasting. And you're just like, I cannot believe that this yeah. guy got taxpayer money to make these films because they are <laughs> so out there and so like. And not yeah. that P, I mean PBS in America does amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Too, but like this is like really pushes the boundary and yeah. I'm like, this is like so um i'm so happy that like there is like the that there is room in the culture for yeah. like, people to express themselves this way right and that people are holding this up it's like you know what you may not like this kind of film but like this is worth producing mm. because yeah society is better that this exists it helps people to kind of understand the world in a yeah. unique way you know i want to say art for the sake of art is that applicable here yeah and, but and I think the docu. I mean, we're getting into like some potentially very <laughs> tricky, pre- pretentious. You got to be careful to like rein me in with some of it. Uh, uh, but pretty uh, soon we'll we'll transition from a podcast to our own experimental. Just document. like yeah, yeah. Um, I uh, I think. What, wait, what was the question? I, th- I said I want to say art for the sake of right. Art. I th- I mean I think that I mean documentaries kind of just um, satisfy this like curiosity that people have to get to know different um parts of the yeah. world right and and there's just like this thing that this hunger that people have to be like mm-hmm. educated and inter- entertained at the same time you know that documentaries yeah. really resonate with and i think that this is a great time to be making documentaries you know like um as difficult as it is to get funding and yeah. as difficult as it is to make a life as a filmmaker um there are a lot of different people who are getting interested in documentaries and understanding like how kind of far out you can go with it. You know what I mean? Mm, Whereas before I think it was this fixed thing that people had in their minds of like a documentary is the civil war by Ken Burns. And that's what a documentary is. Yeah. They just show, um, tracking shots of a piece of artwork. Yeah. Yeah. And And there's an interview. Yes. That is a documentary, you know, and that, Sure. Tells the story of the Civil yeah. War in, in 18 hours, but yeah, um, it's cool, you know, it's like that there are all these like 
different ways now that people are like going logging on their computers yeah. and watching crazy documentaries and yeah. hopefully going to see them in the theaters too right yeah for sure yeah and with documentaries it seems like it seems like it'd be tricky to because like you said it took you what four years to make this movie yeah so I mean I mean I can't even imagine how many hours of footage you had yeah just stockpiled and then you're like yeah. all right how do we how do we tell a story yeah you know you can almost it, it's probably almost enough where you could tell almost any story you wanted to or no story at yeah. all <laughs> just show uh, what, what were yeah. what are some challenges with the editing process well we uh that's a good question i mean um we would go film you know and we didn't when we started out we didn't quite know what the story was or if mm-hmm. it was a story you know and then we would go back with whatever we filmed over the course of like four days or a week or however long we were there sure. and just edit them all like try to find like what is the like short film within this thing that we just shot you know mm-hmm. and yeah. we would kind of like hold them up next to each other and try to see the ways that they kind of interact with each other and um, yeah. and we we just kind of learned more and more what the story was as we continued to go down and film but so much of it was serendipity too um you know you can't really plan a lot around trips to louisiana like yeah we would call people nutrient hunters and stuff mm. like hey we're thinking about coming to louisiana in two weeks can oh, you yeah. are you around on the 18th of uh december or whatever people were like i don't know call me on the 18th of december i'll tell yeah. you if i'm around or not oh, and it's just and that, but that same kind of serendipity also worked to our advantage too, because mm. though if it would like rain and we weren't able to go crabbing, you know, to film a scene or whatever, mm-hmm. we could just randomly call somebody and be like, "Hey, you know, we met you at a Nutria Tail collection site. Do you mind if we come by and just hang out and get to know you?" Yeah. You know, because a lot of the film was not shot. You know, it was just us getting to know people and talking to people mm. and. Um, forming friendships and relationships and stuff and they kind of would point us in the direction of things that like they think would be interesting yeah you know and so um you know if you're able part of the luxury of not really being paid (laughs) which we weren't you know when we (laughs) were shooting the film was like you kind of you're your own boss and you can kind of like decide what Mm. you're gonna do yeah you know you have limited resources in terms of you're spending money on mm-hmm. fuel and you know oftentimes lodging and you're like we're probably gonna have stuff, to use real nutrients we probably can't see right. a million yeah. nutrients on this yeah right yeah. here yeah uh but it was a it's to make a film like this it was a mm-hmm. it was a luxury but it also is why it took so long you know, sure we were kind of taking our time to really, yeah um get to know people and, well i think the warmth really came across like if the audience is the camera, you I, you felt like you were right there, and, and it didn't feel like the people were like, you know, I'm in front of a camera right now. Yeah, you well, know? that's definitely our main character, Thomas. Like, he yeah. is exactly like he is <laughs> off camera as on camera, and he's never really thought of, he's never really been that interested in it, why we're even there. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, we show yeah. up. We're interested in talking to him. He's game to talk, you know? Yeah. And we, like, go out on the boat with them, and we're, like, we're definitely slowing him down, you know, if we're mm-hmm. out on the boat, because we're asking him. It's more yeah. fuel to have us up there. We're asking him questions all the time. But right. you know what? He's like, if you're interested, I'm game to talk, you know? Yeah. And I'm game to just be participate in this yeah. process, right? But he makes a great documentary subject in that, like, he has no kind of agenda. He just is who he is. <laughs> Whether the camera is right. on or off, you know, yeah. and so, um, and he has that generosity of spirit, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, and a lot of people in Louisiana kind of, you know, we experience that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I, I don't know what else to say about how great it is, man. Oh, I, I really hope it. It. Are do you still have more festivals that you're going? Yeah, to? Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna be. Um, we got a, a bunch more, right? But we're. We're all over. Um, we're go- heading to the Pacific Northwest uh, okay. next week, so towards the end of September, mm-hmm. uh, and then we're going to be at the Ben Film Festival and the Tallgrass Film Festival in Wichita, Kansas. The mm-hmm. Ben Film Festival is in Bend, Oregon, um, 
we're, I'm going to be at the Sheridan Wyoming Film Festival and then we're going to be in Arkansas at the Hot Springs Film Festival and we have uh, theatrical dates up and down the East Coast um, Boston, New York and uh, all over like Connecticut and Eastern Seaboard so you can check out yeah. Rodents of Unusual Size TV for the full TV. list yeah. okay, awesome. and what, what, what are your goals with this where do you want this documentary to end up in the end you know? well it's going uh, on there's this amazing PBS series called Independent Lens okay. uh, which it's heading to so the film was a um was brought on supported, uh, you know, towards the end of the process mm-hmm. by ITVS, which is um, supports uh, independent documentaries through the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. So um, ITVS films feed into the PBS uh, lineup, and um, and so we're really thrilled to be a part of this show, Independent Lens. Uh, that's going to be happening in January. Okay. Uh, so that'll be like our TV premiere. And then um, from there, you know, it's going to be available to be streaming. It'll be streaming on PBS. It'll be available on Apple, iTunes, and all those things, and nice. other streaming platforms to yeah. be announced at some point. Right. Well, I I can't wait to to see it again. Man. Thanks, man. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much for doing it. Uh, My can, pleasure. Do you want people to find you on Twitter? Uh, oh, uh, yeah. It's all rodents of unusual size on Facebook. Uh, Rouse documentary on Instagram. Something like that on Twitter too. Wrote some yeah. visual size. I've never tweeted a tweet. You know? <laughs> I started a Twitter account. It was hacked almost immediately. So whoever is tweeting is quick Costello right now. Uh, is probably in this serious <laughs> dark web uh, nonsense. Yeah. All right. Hey, thanks for coming on. Check out Rodents of Unusual Size uh, anywhere you get it. You can follow me on Twitter at LukeLurks89. This podcast at Square Podcast on Twitter, Facebook. Instagram, here's on SoundCloud, YouTube, and we'll see you next time.